We are back. We are back, Bumblebees. Season two, episode 16 of the To Be Better podcast. That's crazy. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Uh, so we are going to be doing email reads today. But before we get into it, for those of you who are new to the show, I am Chris. And I am Peaches. And together we host the To Be Better podcast. <laughs> together with our forces combined, right. we are Captain Planet. I was like, oh. <clears throat> I can't lift my arm up all the way, yeah. but... Uh, we are reading emails that were sent in by viewers, yeah. fans, followers, and people who need advice. It is solicited advice. We are not doctors, lawyers, uh, or pretty much anything professional. We are just two people that are on the internet giving you our opinion, but yeah. we're giving it to you from a whole lot of failed life experience. We're trying, we are. trying to help you be better. We are not chronically online people either. No. So there's a massive disconnect between what a lot of people do on the internet versus what we do. And normally we have banter back and forth at the beginning of the episodes, but we've been told recently that people want us to just jump into the email. So we're trying to sprinkle it throughout the episode. <laughs> they respectfully told us to shut up. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. You have one little group of hair that's sticking straight up Ooh, on the top of your head. Do I got an alfalfa going uh, on? You do actually. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Darla. Oh, I feel so old right now. Oh, I bet the kids would love that movie. That movie? The movie Little Rascals? You know that that was a TV show first, right? Was it really a TV oh, show? Oh, man, now I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sure they would. Oh, my gosh. They really would. That little conversation. Oh, no, we're doing a thing. Sorry, guys, I'm shutting up. <laughs> <laughs> this is me working on myself. This is growth. Into the email. Uh, before you do that, if you guys watched... The episode that dropped on Friday, that was the I versus you statement episode, and you enjoyed that, please let us know. Uh, if that's content that you guys would like to see more of us doing moving forward, um, we need feedback. It was very enjoyable for me. Yeah. I do have a little bit more of housekeeping as well. Okay. For those of you who are on TikTok or YouTube where you're actually watching this, there is a link tree link in our description or bio. There is a survey there so that we can start doing couples retreats where we are going to be doing seminars and live coaching at the retreats. Yep. So if it's something you're interested in, there is a survey that you have to fill out. Um, th the trips will be all inclusive minus airfare and food. So like your hotel stay, all the activities that we have planned, seminars, all of that will be included with the trip. Transportation is not. Oh, is it not? And if you, flying whatever. there, they have to pay for. Right, but when we're there. That's covered. That's covered. Yep. Yeah, so, that's what I meant. Yep. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. So that's something that we'll be doing. We'll be doing some in the U.S. and some international, doing mm -hmm. some abroad travel, and it's right back there. Is it? <laughs> I say you just leave it at this point. It's unruly and wants to be there. Yep. It's like the little blue bird with the thing on the top of its head. I feel like... D-U-R-G out, <laughs> big bird. We ride at dawn, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. This one is titled, Patreon, I could use your help. Uh-oh. Or use your advice. I could use your advice. Well, we have lots of that. Hey, y'all. Before I start, thanks for what y'all are doing. I love being a part of the Patreon and Discord and really enjoy the podcast. Well, thank you. I'm 28 and my wife is 26. We've been together for seven years and married for a little over one year. We have three kids together ranging from one to six. Before we started dating, things were great. We met in college, so we didn't have much money to do things, but we genuinely enjoyed each other's company. We didn't have sex right away, and I asked her to be my girlfriend after a month or so of dating and hanging out. Fast forward a few months later, and she gets pregnant. We're both broke college students, so I made the decision to drop out of school and go to work to provide. Luckily, I had a trade where I could go to work right away without a degree. From day one, she has been a stay-at-home mom. She has had a few short stints of, at jobs over the years, but I have done everything I can to make sure she can have the life she wants and raise our kids how we want. I love everything about that. I, I don't like that he dropped out of college because I'm sure he was going to something he wanted to do. Yeah. But having a trade to fall back on and actually doing the trade, like, bro, you wasted your time with college anyways. You had a trade. <laughs> could be, you could have owned a business by that point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have the debt. That's going to be a thing the whole episode, huh? Yeah, I'm okay. enjoying this. Okay. This is fun for me. I can... <clears throat> you can feel it? Feel it in my forehead. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I got a bobblehead up there. 
<laughs> All right. About a year after our first child is born, things got hard. I had a long commute to work. It was over an hour one way. This was exhausting for me. Work was stressful and home was stressful. Because I wasn't home much, my wife was exhausted too. She wasn't getting a break from our child and she wasn't doing well mentally. Okay, I'm going to pause. There's more happening there than just you guys being exhausted. If you're mm-hmm. missing that much home time, you guys are, are at a disconnect. Correct. Right? So it's important to realize that it's not just that you're exhausted and that you're stressed out. Like your relationship is strained. You need to acknowledge that just as much as the exhaustion. Otherwise, you're not going to fix it. Yeah. And this is also a good time to plug looking into postpartum depression. Yeah. We are working on those episodes. I've taken a break from that research. Yeah. Yeah, I have. I have not had the wherewithal to focus. Well, you've also make been quality notes. on a broken elbow and pain meds for the last week. So. Yeah. So that is in the works. We are looking into postpartum everything and doing deep dive episodes on that. That way, instead of just saying, guys, research it. We're going to do it for you. We're going to do it for you and provide all the information necessary before you welcome this new bundle, stressful joy of life <laughs> and stress and <laughs> frustration. and Yeah, that first year. <laughs> it's a lot. Definitely a lot to work through. Very rewarding, though. Back into the email. A little bit of background. We were new parents and young parents and didn't have a healthy childhood. So we're learning this parenting thing on the fly. I didn't know how to be a dad. I didn't have one growing up. My wife had a physically and mentally abusive mom. We weren't set up for success with how to communicate and how to have a healthy and productive relationship. You guys just described 99% of the world's population right now. And that is why To Be Better podcast was birthed. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just had a moment in my brain. <laughs> so growing up, I had a lot of cousins and we all ranged in ages. So we watched all sorts of movies. And one of the movies that we all watched a lot because all ages could agree on it was Robots. The one with Robin Williams in it where he's the red robot. Oh, the cartoon. Yeah, the cartoon movie. It was It's funny and enjoy and whatnot. But one of the main protagonist in that movie has a line that he says where he says see a need fill a need Mm -hmm. and i feel like we're really doing that with the podcast and it this feels good that is that is a surefire way to have a successful business you provide Mm -hmm. a service that people need and we are doing that robin williams is one of the most tragic existences of my lifetime me too i didn't have a dad growing up i don't i don't know why i thought about him a lot today robin williams This morning, he was he was that father figure for me. Yeah, he was yeah. so damaged, and all he you know he used his comedy as a relief. But he did. yeah, very very sad. Such good movies too, and they weren't all comedy. Uh, no, they weren't. That one that we watched, what was it? What, what dreams may come? Yeah, go to cry movie will make me cry every time I watch it. I want to watch it again. That's because you fell asleep last time. No, it's just <laughs> no, it's so well put together. It like, is really good. It is really really good. It's so good. He's such a, he was, he was such a great actor. Life is insane. Yep. Not, not, life is not just insane. Experiencing life and having to be alive and make decisions and be an active force within the universe is a lot to comprehend within and of itself. Just every decision I make has a butterfly effect in the universe. Yep. We are such powerful beings. Okay. I need to stop back into the email. So back to a year after our son is born. I'm away from home roughly 12 hours a day for work and the commute because my wife said she needs a break. The very first thing I do when I get home is relieve her and take over with our child. I handle the nighttime and bedtime routine every day. This (laughs) left little to no time for dating or intimacy. It also leaves no time for self-care. Right. Sex was non-existent and communication stopped. That puts him at a a, a 99% work rate. Right. Because he gets up, leaves 12 hours, comes back, and then takes care of all the nighttime shit so that she can get a break. Where's his break? Right. Where is his break? Yep. Because logically, if he's working a 12-hour day, coming home or leaving her in the evening, if he's up at 5 o'clock in the morning, leaving the house at 5.30 to be to work by 7 o'clock, and he's working until... Six o'clock, getting home until seven p.m. 
full 12 hours of being out of the house. However, up that adds up. To. Yeah, it would have been 530 to 530, but that's right. what he said, 12 hours out of the house. So they're realistically, we're going to tell them to wake up two hours earlier in the morning and have self-care. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there needs to be a restructure. A common right ground. There. Yeah. Yeah. I like that we're moving away from the compromise. Um, yeah, I, I know that I, I did a, a lot of deep dive on that word and I know that I took it the way I took it. I know that it doesn't necessarily mean it the way that I took it, but I, I am hung up on two compromise means that you are both conceding. Right. And that's not a win. Yeah. You're both losing. I would rather have an agreement. Right. I would rather have an agreement too. Cause when you think about both people conceding, there could be animosity in that still. Yeah. I gave be. up this to make you happy. Yep. I don't care that you gave up that. This is something that I really wanted. Yep. And just to appease you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Compromise means to make concession and concession means to concede. And to concede means to make a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Back into the email, sex was non-existent and communication stopped. Not having sex was a big thing for me at the time. I needed that release and wasn't getting it. I didn't understand how we were able to do it like rabbits early in our relationship to the point where she gets pregnant and now I can't even touch her. Postpartum. Everything. It's more than that. On his end, it's a lot more than that. It is more than that. Everything changes when you have a baby. Mm -hmm. And not just the restructuring of your life. A woman's hormones are going to be fucked up for a very long time after having a child. Postpartum depression can last up to two years after having a baby. Men by proxy, can have shifts in their own emotions because now their whole home environment has changed. So I, I'm not educated on this at all. I don't know if men experience any hormonal changes when a baby happens or if <clears throat> any of that happens. There's actually terms for that, and that is a thing. And there, there are people out there that are trying to say that men experience postpartum too, but they're not calling it that. They're calling it a parental partum or some shit like that. Yeah. It's not the same thing. There's yeah. changes that happen within the home. Right. The attention changes, the sleep schedule changes, your yeah. money changes, your free time changes. So all the things that create change in the home ends up stressing people out and creating problems for the relationship. The issue that he's having though is he went from being in the roommate phase or the uh the lust phase, the honeymoon phase, doing it like rabbits right. to getting pregnant and now he's working stupid fucking mm-hmm. hours and never seeing his person and never getting any downtime. And all this happened within the first two years of the relationship. Right. Where so, the obsession straight phase should be strong as fuck. Right. Yeah. So it's not that it, it this is just not an uncommon thing, un- unfortunately. This is I don't know how to want to phrase this. This is not doing adult like adult decisions and adult things without being prepared for it. I mean, it is. You guys had really rough childhoods and really haven't navigated or didn't navigate how you wanted to parent on your own or how to process the things that happened to you to ensure that you handle those situations healthily when it repeats. When couples have been together for two or three years and then decide to have a child, there is a larger foundation laid there. Versus being together for five months and then getting pregnant. Yeah. Does that get across what I'm trying to say? Okay. Back into the email. It caused a rift between us. Then shit hit the fan for me. We had a huge argument and broke up. I got fired from my job. And we didn't have a place to stay. We didn't have a plan. We figured out a housing situation and we began to co-parent and still live together during this time because we couldn't afford to live separately. What's the point of breaking up? Right. Like, if you're going to be in that situation, why not just try to make it work? You're going to be living together still. That's choosing anger and being spiteful. Why why do you say that? Why is it choosing anger and being spiteful? Because you guys could work on things and try to problem solve and figure it out. You're living together anyway. You're going to let your anger and frustration about an argument get in the way of the love that you have for somebody because love is a choice. Right. It's hard for people. Especially when they're young like that with a baby yeah. and they're financially fucked because it, everyone that's young is financially fucked right now. Right. So, although that's never, that's not, not ever not been the case. Right. You There's, see all the time about how kids are in their twenties. They're like, oh, I can't afford to buy a house. I couldn't afford to buy a house when I was 20. I was living off of ramen. Right. PB and J's. I was broke as fuck. It took time for me to like 
get to the point where I could even have hope of buying a house. Mm -hmm. But. Back into the email. Yeah. I struggled to find a full-time job, but was able to bring in money and provide financially through freelance work. And she went back to school. We weren't together. So she was dating and active sexually with other people. So the problem is that she didn't want to have sex. The problem was that she didn't want to have sex with him. Or he didn't want to have sex with her. Because he said I couldn't, I, the, I didn't want to touch her or look at her or however he worded that. I didn't understand how we were able to do it like rabbits early in our relationship to the point where she gets pregnant and now I can't even touch her. I took that as she was shutting it down. Like, don't touch me. I'm not no, in the mood. Maybe. That's how I took that. So if that's the case, that is postpartum. That, it's, that could be postpartum. Um, but I, I took it as he, he wasn't interested either. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that could definitely be the case. I could be wrong. I know that if I was working 12 hours a day and had to come home and deal with a baby and not have any downtime for myself ever, sex would be the last thing on my mind. I'd be laying down and I'd be out like... Yeah, he said he he needed that release though. And yeah. he, he wasn't getting it. I don't know. I, I would take it super personally if we are now living as roommates and now you're fucking all of these other people while I'm over here like... I, I would live in my car. Right. I, I wouldn't live with somebody after I broke up with him. Yeah, I agree with that. In that situation though. I, I would evaluate that. So very clearly there is the desire there. Why wasn't the desire there with me? And knowing that women connect their emotions to their sexual desires, there was massive, there was a massive disconnect between those two with you specifically. And of course, women can have sex without emotions with other people. I can't. <laughs> That's why I always waited with people. That was never a right off the bat type thing. I would do I would be doing a lot of self-reflection in that. Like I can understand why he would be upset with her. He, he didn't say he was. In that moment, I could understand why people would be upset with that. My biggest advice in that, if if you are feeling anger towards somebody because now you are broken up, you guys have made the decision to break up and now they're with other people and that makes you mad because they weren't doing that with you when you were together, ask yourself why. I'm curious if she was talking to other people while he was working all the time. Oh, that's a good question. Because that, that emotional disconnect normally happens when other people are involved. Yeah. There's attention fulfillment elsewhere. Yeah, you turn it off one faucet and turn it on another. Yeah. Back into the email. Over the next year and a half to two years, I get back on my feet. I begin to gain traction in my career and gain more self-confidence and start to be her friend again. And we decide to give the relationship another try. Now let's fast forward three years later. We now have three kids together. I've established myself as an expert in my field and I'm able to provide a life for us that we didn't think was possible. She is a stay at home mom and we homeschool our kids and we have a nanny that comes to help her with the kids five days a week from nine to five. I work a lot. Luckily, now I work from home though, but I still work long days. On an average weekday, this is my schedule, 5 a.m. wake up, 5.30, go on a quick run, 6 to 7, plan for my day and work on freelance client work, 7 to 9, during this time I have the kids. Our youngest is 10 months old and doesn't let my wife sleep very much at night, so during this window is around the time our little baby wakes up. I watch her and our other two kids during this two-hour window until the nanny arrives so that my wife can sleep in. 9 to 5, full-time job, 5 to 8, family time, 8 to midnight, depending on the day. I may have some urgent client work to finish up, but typically try to reserve this time to spend time with my wife. Watch a show or just sit and talk. A lot of times, I will bring my computer into the living room and work while we watch a show together as a way to accomplish both things. Do you hear the amount of sacrifice that he's making and how little she is? This man, if he's up until midnight... He's getting five and a half hours of sleep. If we're not even counting decompression time in that. Because right. it, sometimes it takes me up to 45 minutes of just laying there with my eyes closed to fall asleep. Yeah, There is a lot of sacrifice there. I understand that the baby wakes up a lot at night and she's not getting a lot of sleep at night. Bet you she's getting some during the day, though. Right, she's got help got with a the nanny. nanny. Nanny shows up by 9 a.m. The wife is still sleeping in past 9. Till, she, till the nanny gets there. That's what he said, right? I watch her. So rewinding, I watch her, meaning the baby, and our other two kids during this two hour window, meaning seven to nine, until the nanny arrives so that my wife can sleep in. So I don't know if that means the wife is getting up when the nanny gets there. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know. You want to keep going? Yep. I'm trying to provide as much context as I can. I don't feel valued. I feel like I'm just a bank for my wife. On top of being a sole provider financially, I am heavily involved in the house chores. I handle breakfast for the kids every day. And majority of the time, it's up to me to figure out what we're all eating for dinner and to cook it or order it from DoorDash. What? It's up to him to do dinner. That doesn't make sense to me, though. Why? Because three children are a lot. Two kids are a lot. Three kids are a lot. She has a nanny there nine to five. Right. She could absolutely be doing the dinner. You could be doing meal prepping. You can be planning out meals. I would have so <clears throat> much free time if I had a hands-on nanny. Nanny. And the kids are what? 10, 6, and 10 months? What is uh, uh, One six? to six. One to six and their youngest being... That's unacceptable to me. I agree. She's absolutely taking advantage of the situation. I agree with that. All right, moving on. I help clean the house, do laundry, wash dishes, and take out the trash. Wow. I do my best to keep gas in the car. I work from home so I don't drive much, and therefore I don't know when the car needs gas all the time. She won't tell me until it's on E that the car needs gas. I do grocery shopping most of the time, and I even help take the kids to and from gymnastics and soccer practice as often as I can. I would like a list of what she does. Right, because Because I'm... Because now it sounds like nothing. I'm getting moocher vibes from her. This is not wife. This is not even giving girlfriend. This is giving... I hate this term, but it's giving baby mama. Baby... No, I, I wouldn't even give it that. No? Nope. This oh, is, you're right, because there are some baby mamas out there that actually work and provide. Th- and, this is a kept woman mentality. Yeah. She wants to be kept and not have to do anything. Remember we did that episode where somebody was like, I want to be paid for and financed, not have to lift a finger. That's what's happening. I don't remember that. Probably because it made me so upset that I just yeah. repressed it. We had a full on conversation about the difference between a stay at home wife and a kept woman. Because people want to be kept. They want to be the financial Bank, they can just do whatever the fuck they want and don't want to cook clean, do laundry, help with kids. Okay. They want a rich man to finance everything in their existence so they can just live their best life and do whatever the fuck they want. If you're that type of woman, I'm disgusted by you. Yeah. I am. I would not be friends with you. I would not be supportive in your life goals. If that is your life goal to have a man do absolutely everything for you and you don't have to lift a finger, you're a dependent. You're not a wife. Yeah, it's, well, and if they're not fucking, she's definitely independent. Like, oh my gosh. All right, back into the email. I can't seem to motivate her to cook and clean, but she has no problem going out into her garden and working for hours. So she's she's not even parenting if she's going out into her garden for hours at a time during the day. So the nanny is there parenting and she's just... Yep, using her garden as escapism. It's exactly what she's doing. Wow. Be no different if she was playing video games or drinking all day. I agree with that. I feel like I support her with everything. I help with the house. I help with the kids. I'm even helping her start her own business. Why? Yeah. I. What, what, she, what has she done to show you that she is capable of running a business? I was just about to say, she can't even manage y'all's household. It's so much harder to run a business than it is to run a household. So <laughs> much fucking harder. This is me assuming things and doing what I do with my what ifs and whatnot. That... Funding of her business gives me very bad vibes. And you are going, in my assumption, I am going to assume my hypothetical. There's going to be a lot of money lost there. She's going to run whatever business into the ground. And if you get upset or frustrated, she's going to take it super personally and feel like you're blaming her for her failure. She's not going to take accountability in it. I would not deal with that whole mess. Work, Work on managing the household and we'll talk about you getting your own business. Back into the email, I'm a designer by trade, so she's been able to save a lot of money because I'm able to design all of the branding, promotional material, and even her website for free because that's what I do for work. If she has a need, I do everything in my power to make it happen, but we're still having issues. Well, yeah, because you're not her husband, you're her slave. She's taking advantage of you. Yeah, of the situation. She's taking advantage of the situation. It's not just him. It's all of it. The nanny... The potential business. Oh, yeah, business. you're right. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Givers can only give so much. Takers will take until they, there's nothing left to be taken. And yeah. then they'll find somebody else to take from. 
This is a character flaw. Yeah. Absolutely a character flaw on this woman. Intimacy has been an issue again, but I try to be very understanding with that because she has had trauma from when she was a child. But it was an, it wasn't a problem in the beginning. Or when she was having sex with strangers when you guys were on a break. Right. That's a manipulation tactic. It is a manipulation tactic. Yeah. I agree. So if she's triggered or touched out from the kids, I try to be understanding. Being touched out, I get. Yeah. Being touched out has no correlation to her childhood trauma. Right. There's right. overstimulation from the children and then there's actual trauma from abuse in childhood. But she would actually have to be raising the children for that to be a thing. Right. Not, not outside garden. Out her garden. Right. Or attempting to run her business. When the children are here, they have almost my undivided attention. I, I am 100% a hands-on parent. I am correcting behavior that I find wrong. I, not wrong. Unbecoming of, an, of a proper human being. I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying to stay away from right and wrong and good and bad with them. Why? Because that paints things very black and white. And I want them to have curiosity and the craving they understand why humans do what they do and not just what you did was wrong or what you did was bad. Well, wrong or bad in that scenario is a judgment. Yeah. Um, but I do think that it's important that they understand that moral compass. Yeah, I've explained that to them too. Like there are certain things that are wrong. You know, if somebody puts their hands on you in a way that hurts you, that is wrong. So I still have those conversations with them. But I'm trying to steer away from if you do this, you're bad. Right. Like if you yell, you're bad. You're not right. bad. You're right. emotional. Back into the email. She's also put on weight since having our last baby and has been having body issues. Oh, excuse me. She's been working through a lot of childhood trauma lately and has had moments of depression. She has anxiety and ADHD, so I try to be understanding. On the other hand, I'm autistic. I'm on the Asperger side of the spectrum. This is a new discovery for me, and I'm trying to understand myself and learn about how what that's been affecting me as well. I don't catch social cues easily. I don't get emotional cues either. Being able to understand that and acknowledge that is huge. Mm -hmm. That gives you the opportunity to let other people know, I don't understand these things. You have to tell me what's going on. A lot of women, a vast majority of women, expect their men to be mind readers because we've been together for so long, you should just know what's going on with me. They don't. Especially somebody who is on the Asperger's end of a spectrum and cannot pick up on social cues, you have to use your words. We're going to be adults here. We're going to talk about our feelings and be very straightforward with things. Back into the email, I'm very blunt and direct and sometimes come off like an asshole. I have put in a lot of work over the years to get better in those areas, though, even before I knew I had autism. To get to the point, I messed up. I got on OnlyFans, spent a bunch of money on corn, and lied to her about it. I knew I was wrong, but did it anyway. There are no excuses for my actions, and this isn't me trying to justify my actions at all. I just want to share my opinion that I don't think any of that was justifying what happened with the OnlyFans. People will do things that they would never imagine themselves doing when in their mind they're pushed to the extremes of things. When you are locked in a relationship with somebody with three children, you are the sole provider and you, what are you going to do, leave? Right? These, these other people are relying on you. You love this woman. This is one of those desperate attempts to try to put a band-aid on a situation. I agree. Still view it as wrong. I agree with that. It is wrong. But I understand why he did it. Right. So... This is where that moral compass comes into play. Right. Right. This is where my, like, this is wrong situation, but I fucking get why you did it. Yeah. Like. It doesn't make it okay. This is my gray area. Yeah. Right. It, it's it's not okay, but I, I also, from the outside looking in, don't blame him for doing it. I, I really don't. There's a lot of men who are in sexless, sexless marriages mm -hmm. who fucking are resorting to that because their woman won't give them any type of attention. Right. Living as a paycheck. And that's exactly what it is. He's a paycheck. Yeah. Men going out and seeking cert men going and seeking out corn and OFs in my mind is the same as a woman going out and seeking emotional validation from the opposite sex when it's lacking in the relationship. Yeah. It's pretty much the same thing. It's pretty much the same thing. 
And the next step for him would actually be cheating. Right. Like physical cheating. And it wouldn't take much. No, it wouldn't. You know, he said he gets up at 530 every morning and goes for a run. I'm assuming he's in pretty decent shape. It wouldn't take much for him to go out and meet somebody and get a little bit of attention and realize what he's been missing for the last seven years. One cute jogger chick. Yep. Doesn't even have to be a jogger chick. It could be a fucking fat chick at Starbucks who just smiles at him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't it doesn't take much when you are lonely and miserable like that and you're deprived. You're just fucking existing in your day to day and you feel like Mm -hmm. you're in a hamster wheel. Right. People get into that point. It's it's why cheating and divorce happens the way that it does. But all that shit could be fixed. Yeah. Humans crave attention and validation and Mm -hmm. love and belonging. When you look at a human being and you can tell they haven't eaten, you see it in their physical form by being starved. Right. Everything that I just said before about the validation and the approval and the wanting to be wanted, imagine that as a human being that's being starved. Yeah. You have to feed that in order for it to be healthy. When something is starved, the brain starts to consume itself and you can't make rational decisions. When somebody is at a heightened emotional level like that, I don't believe when he went and looked at OnlyFans, he knew it was wrong. I don't believe it was a rational decision on his end, though, because he was so starved for the attention. Attention. That he was willing to put himself in any position, even though he knew that there would be bad repercussions from it, just to get that in the moment. Back into the email. In my mind, we're falling back into what happened to us years before we broke up. Intimacy broke down. I turned to corn and she left me. For her, she's done with me. She threw her ring at me and said the only reason she hadn't left is because of the kids. I think that that's way before now. I agree with that. Yep. Her spending all of the hours in the garden and. I, I So from from his point of view, everything that has been laid out in this email, what I see, and this is purely my opinion, mm-hmm. is that she was trying to get her business up and off the ground to start generating revenue to be able to leave, to be able to leave because this has been going on for a while now and he's doing everything that he can and the sex has stopped and all of that. She's checked out. She's checked out, but she's still hurt because he did something that she disagrees with. Yeah. Yep. When people get to that point and there's kids involved and they have to coexist and live in that, that's in my mind where the polyamory discussion becomes a thing. I agree. Because that there's that emotional disconnect. Right. We're cohabiting. Right. There's the understanding that we can be lifelong support partners but we're not going to be romantic partners right we love each other but we're not in love with each other yeah we don't see a change in that we're just not going to bring them home mm-hmm. we're going to go do our own thing that could be okay if that's the discussion but i mean that's you know this is a worst case scenario for me this yeah. entire thing is a worst case scenario oh yeah i agree i i wouldn't want to live like that me either i'm curious if he was able to see the warning signs of all of this becoming a thing as it slowly degraded Maybe. Because you don't just wake up one day and this be your life, right? It's a series of unfortunate events that that get to that point. Mm-hmm. She said, because I did me that she is going to do her now and I better not have anything to say about it. Wow. So yeah, I messed up pretty badly. I understand that and I accept the consequences of my actions. So wait a minute. You, okay, go, go ahead. No, you're good. So you looked at OnlyFans and now she's going to go fuck other people. Yeah. It's not, it's not the same thing. No, it's not. Still cheating, but it's not the same thing. On the flip coin, she could also say, I fucked up really bad. My husband's paying to see corn. Yeah. I messed up. She would have to take accountability for that. She's not the type of woman to do that. No, she's not. Not based off of what he's written. What he's written does not paint the picture that she is the type of woman to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make her stay with me. I hope she will, though. How can I get her to understand that what I did wasn't about her? It was about me. It was me looking for attention in the wrong places instead of with her. And that I do love her and our kids. So in order for you to say that I do love her and the kids, she had to say that you don't love her and the kids. Mm -hmm. Which in turn, you could also hit her with, well, you've stopped having sex with me. We don't kiss. You don't hug me. Do you even love me? I hate that whole manipulation tactic of you did this so you don't love me and the kids. Right. If you were to flip that and hit them with it, well, no, that's not the case. I'm touched out. I'm with the kids all day. Are you, though? You're in the garden for hours at a time. Like, from the picture that he is painting of her, she's very deep in the victim mindset. And this is not somebody that I would try to 
rekindle that relationship with until she takes steps to figure out her own demons. I don't think she's in the victim mindset. No, what is it? I think she's a manipulator. I think that the entire time she's gotten everything that she's wanted. Yeah. And now she wants to fuck other people and she's found a reason for it to happen. Yeah. How are you going to go from I'm touched out and dealing with my childhood trauma and don't want to have sex mm-hmm. to finding out that your person is looking at corn on the internet and now you're going to tell you're telling them that you're just going to go fuck other people and you can just accept that. All right. I thought you were touched out. Right. I thought you were touched out and tired and exhausted and not feeling the need for intimacy. And there's childhood trauma. So you can't have sex. Right. It's not a victim mentality. She's a manipulator and she's playing the situation to get all the things that she wants. And because he's in love with her and has been with her since college, he's trying to accommodate all of her wants and needs. And what it's done is it's made him a worker. Mm -hmm. It's made him a, uh, an entrepreneur to be because he's doing all the work for her business. It's made him a father that has to have a nanny. It's made him lonely, depressed, and disconnected from his family. And now he's looking at corn on the internet because he's attention starved. That's all devastating to hear. It happens a lot. I know. And a lot of women would still side with his wife or fiance or whoever she is and say, well, you're in the right for feeling all the things you're feeling. It depends on the story that the wife tells. It does depend on the story that the wife tells. Everything that he has said, even if 10% of it is true on her end, she is fucking wrong for this. You are a stay at home mom. With a nanny and a With garden. a nanny. Yeah. Like, I, that doesn't cook. She doesn't cook. She doesn't, doesn't do clean. the laundry. Right. Doesn't you cook. You do absolutely clean. nothing. Right. Yep. You know that in both of, in hearing all of this, the two of them, he's the catch. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And he's an active, involved father. Mm-hmm. Yep. She threw her ring back at him. I would, I would end it and I would say, look, you're choosing this. And I, I would put big money on the fact in two or three years, she's going to come back and be like, you were the greatest thing that ever happened it, to me. I, it wouldn't even be two or three years. She'd go fuck around for a little while, get her needs satiated, and then want to come back. I would give it less than a year. And I would not allow that comeback. I wouldn't either. You've had all this time to fix it. You found out that I was watching corn, and I told you that I, was, I felt fucked up doing it, but I felt pushed to the breaking point of craving attention and love, and you left me. And then went and fucked other people and told me that you couldn't do that with me because of trauma. Yep. I am physically attracted to her, even with the extra weight. But when my advances are constantly rejected day after day, week after week, month after month, I stopped trying. I don't feel wanted. I just feel like I'm here because I can provide an easier life for her sometimes. That's what it sounds like to me as well. Sometimes. Oh, since this incident's happened, I have been trying to do the work on myself. I'm in therapy to get to the root of my own issues. I told her that I will respect whatever decision she makes about whether she wants to stay or leave, but I hope she will stay. Why? Stay for what? Right. Why? Why? You, you don't have stay? a wife. You barely have a mother for your children. I bet your nanny knows more about your children than your wife does. I just feel like I'm here to provide an easier life for her. That is what you are accepting if she chooses to stay. Yep. That's exactly what you're accepting. And so is she. But she's also told him that she's going to go do her and there's nothing he can do about it. Yeah. So even if she does stay, is, the, is there going to be infidelity on her part? And do you believe there won't be? I have heard too many cases of men and women feeling betrayed, going out and sleeping around because they feel like that's their justice and coming back with an STD. Yeah, or pregnancy. I'm not playing that game. Back into the email. I would like to say that in this situation, if this was us and I found out you were watching corner paying for OnlyFans, I would feel very like, where did I go wrong? Yeah, I would. I I would definitely feel like this is a me problem because yeah. of how we are with each other. We're so in tune and lovey dovey and. And sex is incredible. Yeah. Like it, it, it's always been that way. Like it's not been ever bad. Yeah. There's never been a time I was like, I, I could have been doing something else. Right. And there's never been a moment where one of us wanted it and it didn't happen. You know what I mean? So like, I don't, I would look at, I would, I honestly, I'd be like, okay, I'm obviously not fucking pulling my weight. What is happening here? Yeah. And we would have to have a discussion, whether it was a a lack of intimacy or a lack of safety or just a lack of desire. Maybe I've put on weight or my breath stinks all the time. I don't fucking know something. 
Mm-hmm. And I would try to work on that. And if things changed from that point, great. And if it didn't, then I, we're done. Like, I know at that point that our sex life is over. That's a huge part of our life for us. Yeah. And if we don't have that long term, it's not sustainable because I, I know me. I know me. I know that if you if you resisted my advances for six or seven months, I would be looking at other women. If I feel like I'm just a paycheck and all I'm doing is providing this life, I can do that and still have freedom. I can live in my car and still fucking live my life and be happy. Whereas living here, I'm not because I'm alone. I'm fucking not important. My advances are being fucking denied. I'm the one doing all the work and providing everything while she lives her great fucking life. The resentment right. would be real for me like that. I'm, yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't let it get to that point. Me either. If I, you, I would expect you to start looking elsewhere. If you denied me two or three times in a row, I would call you out on it. Yeah. Like what the fuck is happening? Yeah. This is the third time I've made an advance and you've shot me down. What's going on? Because it's not normal. Right. And it ain't going to become normal. Mm-hmm. Back into the email. I'm going to get gross. Okay. I could understand if it was like, you've been having really bad stomach problems, right? Okay. Like number two problems. And it's been three days in a row and you have been, I know you've been having stomach problems because I've walked into the bathroom after you and I'm like, nope. Yeah. Right? That's a different discussion. It is. Heavy menstrual cycles. I don't want to hear that shit. That's an excuse. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, and anything beyond those two things, I, I don't see... Like maybe you're like having like internal pain, right? There could be like a real physical illness. Your elbow's broken, your ankle's fucked up. So I've been hands off since Saturday. I'm afraid to kiss you because if I hit your hand the wrong way, it's going to hurt you. I hate this. I (laughs) understand that. Yeah. But just because you've had a long day or the kids might be too much or you were gardening all day. You've had a long day for three months now. Right, right. Okay. I'm just that 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 is a huge fucking problem for me. And every man that's currently listening to the podcast, if you live that life, you know, it's a fucking problem. Mm -hmm. You're all listening right now going, yep, this is where my life is right now. What do I do? You talk to your woman and find out what the fucking problem is. Yeah. Hey, we haven't had sex in six months. Why? And if she says you never initiate be like, I have tried. You have shot me the fuck down. You guys have the power in that situation because Mm -hmm. if we make an advancement that you don't want, even though we're married, it can be problematic for us. More now than ever, do women control the intimacy in a relationship? I have to answer this. So you have to talk to your woman. If you're in, if this is where you're at, you have to talk to your woman. You have to find out what's going on. And then I said that if if you're making advances and she's shutting you down and saying that that you're never initiating the intimacy, maybe what she's telling you is that you're not buying her flowers or buying her chocolates or taking her on dates and your connection has failed Mm -hmm. and she's waiting on you to reconnect because there's a difference from going, she's at work today. I'm going to send her an edible arrangements with a cute little card that says, I love you versus coming home and going, Hey, it's seven o'clock. We normally go to bed at eight 30. Want to go to bed early? I'll grab a towel. Cause boy, that really gets fucking juices flowing. That does it. There's got to be ways that you can lay those hints out and build anticipation and bring your romance back because romance to women matters. Romance to men does not. So like the flower petals and candles and fragrances and all of that, that's a woman's thing. And if you're not doing that for your woman, you're missing part of the, the warming the engine up. For all you guys who have owned a car before 1985 and age, you know that you start the fucking car and you let it sit for a little while and then you drive the shit. Got to warm the engine up, not just push button, drive the fuck off. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I would be so offended. (laughs) (laughs) You trying to shine a shoe? What the fuck was that? (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Oh man. Back into the email. Yeah. Again, I take full responsibility for what I did. I messed up. Is there anything else I can do to show that I want to see this marriage through? Thanks for reading this. Hopefully it all makes sense. I'm by no means trying to make excuses for myself or my actions, but I could use some help. I'm happy to provide any extra context or clarity that is needed. Thanks in advance for any and all advice. I love y'all. 
My advice is to, if she is done and wants to end things, I would accept that. I would too. And I I would would stick with it. I would 100% stick with it. And if she comes crawling back and says, no, this is what I want, then prove it to me. Yeah. No, I would say it's too late for that. You fucked that up. Yeah. We fucked that up. We had an opportunity to make this work and we chose otherwise. And, And that's the discussion that needs to be had before she leaves. Okay. Be like, look, I know that you really want out of this. We have been in a roommate phase for a year or however long it's been. If you would like to try to make this work, I would like to try to make this work. But if you walk out that door, know that this there's no return. You cross that threshold and walk out that door. We are done. I'm and not I, coming back. I'm moving on. Right. Right. And this is your decision. So you're going to have to live with that. If you would like to go to marriage counseling, we can do marriage counseling. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can start going on dates again. But if you leave or you move out, we're done. Yeah. And, and I would hold to that. And it's going to suck. It is. But like I said in the beginning of this email, you're a catch. Mm-hmm. As a woman, I agree with that. In this equation, the gentleman is the catch. I fucking wish men knew the amount of like... Value they have. The rarity that we have. Oh. You get a good man who has a, a good job that is good with kids, that is willing to work and provide and allow a woman to stay at home and do the things that she wants to do. You are one in like 250,000 people. Right? Then having the ability to actually provide that, that number goes to one in millions. Right. And and have a nanny on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. This dude is doing everything on his own already. He just has a woman there. Yeah. Because he has the nanny who comes in and helps with the kids. That wouldn't change if she left. I'm real big on if I have to do this on my own, I'm just going to do this on my own. Yeah. I'm real big on if I'm going to be miserable with you, I can be just as miserable without you, but I'll have freedom and a peace of mind knowing that I only have to worry about me now. And no headache. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I am I am that, that person when it comes to that. I can be miserable in, in both scenarios. I'm going to choose the latter because this clearly isn't working. Right. But again, I wouldn't allow it to get to this point. The moment I noticed that our relationship started to shift, we would have conversations about course correcting. Yeah. Um, we actually had that conversation when I came off my testosterone last time. We did. Uh, but we had this conversation last time I came off my testosterone because I went through a depression. Yeah. I, I went from being in the low 900s because I was on my testosterone to being like 180. Killed my sex drive, killed my sleep schedule, killed my fucking enjoyment in life. Made me not want to do anything. And we had a whole lot of problems with it. It, And it started to affect our sex life heavily. Mm -hmm. And we had the conversation about it. And I was like, look, this isn't an an I don't want to thing. I still think you're absolutely fucking stunning. And I want to spend time with you and go on dates. I just don't want to fucking get off the couch. I don't want to go anywhere. I, I don't think my little drill sergeant's ready to stand at attention. Like I'm having a whole lot of fucking Mm -hmm. internal shit. And we had a really long discussion about it. And the moment I got back on my shit, it was like two weeks later. I was right back to normal. Yeah. Hormones are important. Shout out to Matrix Hormones. And as a woman, it's so important to understand what your man go through goes through when he has low testosterone. Right. Because I was taking a lot of that personally. I didn't understand to the full extent how it affects your mental health. Right. And when you came off the way that you did... And I sat down with you and I was like, I'm having these emotions and I, I like, I know this is going to hurt you telling you this and I'm sorry. And we had that conversation and you told me everything that you were going through. It was like a light bulb went off in my brain. And instead of having this false connection where I'm the issue, there's the actual real logical connection. And if I never broached that conversation with you, that understanding would have never been had. So now every time you come off of your testosterone, there's just this mental preparation for life. Yeah. Like when you get ready for a trip. We got, we've got we gotten to the point where we go long distances that I do my shot right before we leave so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. The um, It's crazy to me how unknown the testosterone effects are and how widely known the estrogen effects are because we expect that. Men ex- For women to be moody. We know. Yeah. If you're married, you know, like, okay, it's the third fucking week of the month. Things are about to be bad or whatever that time frame is. Um, But we also know that as you get older, there's going to be other hormonal changes that we're going to have to deal with. But Mm -hmm. it's not spoken about in terms of men. So a lot of men don't know. And I am going to just plug Matrix one more time. If you guys are curious about having your blood work done, I highly recommend that you do it. Even if you think there's nothing fucking wrong with you, go get your blood work done. If you go to matrixhormones.com, click on the drop down for the referral. It'll say to be better sent you. 
Um, it'll save you $200 on your consultation. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to go to a lab locally to you. You're going to get stuck. They're going to draw three or four vials of blood. They're going to send it to a lab. You're going to get your, your thyroid, your estrogen, your, your liver lipids, your testosterone, your kidney functions, all of that shit. And if you're healthy, you'll get a bill back of, well, it's not a bill. You'll get your paperwork that shows all of your good numbers. And three to five, 10, 15 years from now, if you start having issues, you'll have that paper to go, here's where I was when I was perfect and everything was healthy. So they know what your your stats should look like. If you go in there and things are fucked up, they're going to catch it. Hey, you could have a liver failure. You could be fucking having uh, hepatitis of your liver. You could be having kidney issues. You could be having a lot of things that you don't know about because we're used to aches and pains and hurting all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, my fucking back hurts really bad today. I wonder why that is. And then three days later, you pass a fucking kidney stone. You know what I mean? Like there's things going on in it that you have no idea because you can't see it. Yeah. But if you get your blood work done, it makes a lot of that shit visible. And if your testosterone is off, they can fucking bring that up. So, and if you're a woman, you need to do it too, because y'all are a whole lot more complex than we are. I like to call us swimming pools. <laughs> <laughs> My brain didn't go to where yours did. Cause I'm sure you were going to pH balance and chlorine. Yeah. And- you filthy. Do you have that with me? The... Oh, it's the third week of the month. No, because you don't have that because you're on your birth control. Yeah. So no, I don't. Well, I like to think I handle my emotions pretty well, too. Yeah. I never want to be the wife that you complain about. I don't want to ever have to to be with a woman I have to complain about. So that works out really well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Like, cause I've, I've heard men talk about their women and I'm like, damn, that's her actions. Like, that's how you perceive your wife. And like it hurts to hear because neither person wants to be doing the things that they are doing, but the misery is so normalized that that's just their fucking life. Right. Well, think about the woman we saw, the women we saw at Vegas. That's that's relationships now, babe. Um, I, uh, that that is why we have a successful podcast because people are caught in that that cycle of fucking nonsense. Yeah. You guys got to find somebody that's willing to match your efforts. The courting phase needs to be a thing. They got yes. they got together and like got pregnant quick. They he asked her to be his girlfriend after one month, and then four months after that, she got pregnant. Right. So they've been playing life whether they wanted to or not. There was no foundation built there, mm-hmm. and he had to drop out of college to fucking do things. While she got to not have to worry about shit since they were in college, she's just been living her best life, and it's all the world has been on his shoulders. You're getting a free boat ride. Yeah. Yep. You want to do another email? Yeah, we need to do one more. It's only only been an hour. All right. So this one is called Young Couple. And we have to do a thank you. So we'll do this one in a thank you. Hello. Before getting into this email, I would like to state that it does talk about miscarriage. Okay. I know Peaches has been through one and it may be triggering, so I would just like to give that a heads up. I am a huge fan of your podcast and it has helped me so much in my life. I also recently joined your Patreon and Discord. Thank you for that. I'm 20 years old, and I've been with my husband, who's 21, for about five years. We courted for eight months before dating, for another three, and then started an official an official relationship. So they did all this at 15 and 16 years old. Which is super uncommon. I am very impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I could not fucking imagine being in the dating game. Mm-mm. In total, we've known each other for almost six years. When I was 19, he proposed to me on Valentine's Day. My 19th birthday was February 1st. I said yes, and we got married the following September in 2022. We've been married less than a year, but have already been through so much. Our communication is amazing. We've never had issues with miscommunication and have never gotten into a fight. All our disagreements are handled very quickly as we both state how we're viewing things, try to see the other person's perspective, and then come to a mutual understanding. So they're validators. That's good. Once we've come to an understanding, we either address the initial cause of the conflict or move on if it was addressed by us understanding each other. Our values are traditional in a sense. He's an aviation mechanic, and I work from home as a financial analyst and I'm in school for midwifery. He makes significantly more than I with much longer hours, so he has more of the mortgage and other finances, cars, 
garbage, lawn maintenance, etc. And he takes care of the mortgage. I'm going to reread that sentence. He makes a... <sighs> he makes significantly more than me with longer hours. So he takes care of the mortgage and other finances, cars, garbage, lawn maintenance, lawn maintenance, etc. I do all the cooking, cleaning, and taking care of our pit bull slash Dalmatian mix puppy. This is what we both wanted when we started courting and set out our expectations, and neither of us have ever faltered in the three years we've lived together. Despite being married less than a year, we've already been through two very tragic losses. Two days after our wedding, I found out I was pregnant in a doctor's office after getting annual blood work done. Ah, the importance of blood work. Look at that. Two weeks after the wedding, we moved from Toronto, Canada to Texas as we couldn't handle Canada's politics slash economy and how they handled the pandemic. I I love hearing that. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Me too. From Canada to Texas. They went from, eh, sorry, (laughs) to howdy, y'all. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man! Where they can carry. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love they, it. They, they, that's a fucking world of difference between yeah. the, the great state of Texas and Canada. Yes, it is. No offense to all of our Canadian viewers. I like your guys' food. Yeah, your ketchup uh, ketchup lays are amazing. <laughs> anyway, the sweetest fish. The what? Swedish fish. Oh, okay. What did I say? Sweetest. Swedish. Swe- I got that whistle going yeah. too. Okay, I got to stop. I'm going to keep doing it. I get in cycles of words. At eight weeks, I miscarried. It was hard, but we weren't trying, so it made it a little bit easier to get through. After the miscarriage, I found out I had PCOS. I always knew that I had hormone issues, and Canada refused to treat it. Texas will. Matrix hormones. Yes. Thankfully, I have a good doctor here now that helps me out. Well, there you go. Should ask him about semaglutide mm-hmm. or trizepatide. I started changing my diet and workouts to work around my fertility so we could try again. This time, I got pregnant with twins. At 12 weeks pregnant, mid-April 2023, I miscarried both. Damn. That sucks. That's back to back. With twins is the second time. Yeah. From my understanding, it's more common with twins, though, because that's some people's wombs are just not built to house two lives. And when you think about it, it takes a lot of the body just to host one baby. Yeah. This both destroyed us emotionally and mentally, as not even 24 hours beforehand, we had heard both heartbeats. Since the loss, I've been to multiple doctors, and they all had given the go-ahead to try again. My husband, however, was hesitant to try, as he doesn't think either of us could mentally handle another miscarriage, if it were to happen again. Also, since the last one, it's like he's been stepping on eggshells during intimate bedroom time. For context, we are extremely involved in the BDSM world, and I have always enjoyed submitting to him. However, as of late, he has ha- he has been more soft, gentle, and in other terms, vanilla. Ooh, that's a conversation that needs to be had. You guys need to talk about that because that will absolutely destroy your fucking sex life. It will. It'll destroy your relationship. Yeah. Um, it's not a secret we have a dom sub relationship. When our when our life gets to be too much and playtime has become less exciting, we schedule that playtime to be exciting. We talk about it. We do. Hey, this hasn't happened in a little while. We need to. There's a deep rooted connection in that. Right. And it's a connection that I only have with you right. as my husband, as my man, as my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and when life shit gets in the way, even though everything else is still very, very solid, there that love meter is definitely going right. down. And that is one that that definitely needs attention. It doesn't have to be a five nights a week thing. No, it doesn't. Y'all can schedule it once a month for three hours. Three hours is a very long time. (laughs) Definitely needs to be talked about. Different perspective. 
he might be absolutely horrified to touch you because he's seen you go through two massive losses now. And there is a, a delicate fragility that comes to men approaching their women after those kinds of things. Are you processing? Um, I, I'm going, I, I don't, we have been very soft spoken about that side of our relationship mm -hmm. because it's ours, right? Right. In the event that this was an us experience, two losses, mm -hmm. emotional. I mean, three, if you three, think about it. Three, right. Um, the emotional, t emotional turmoil that would come, come with that. Playtime would be an emotional release, mm -hmm. right? Done properly, that would be a great opportunity for there to be healing, crying. Right. If you came to me after all of that, when you were like, I need like a serious playtime like leave bruises, you know, something like yeah. you told me what you needed and, and it was aggressive. I'm going to oblige that because I understand that there's a lot of healing that can come in those right. moments for people with proper aftercare. And I, I don't know. I know that there are a lot of people out there that don't understand that community, but the people who understand that community really understand that community. And that's, I would fucking, I'm getting emotional thinking about be it. Be taking a day off of work. Yeah. Like we're ruining shit. Putting plastic over everything. Things are going to get bloody. Like, let's go. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you too. But do you, do you see what I'm saying? I like, do, yeah. Right. I think that, I don't know how I just came to this conclusion, but I think that those play sessions are no different than long tattoo sessions. Right. Or, you know, doing a suspension. There is an, an endorphin release that comes from all of that. And there is a disassociation that happens from who you are. And mm -hmm. all of the life problems go away in those moments because... Nothing else matters other than what you are experiencing right now. And people who have been in real pain that they knew was going to end shortly, mm -hmm. that pain makes you feel alive because you know that nothing else in the world matters right now except for what you're experiencing. I don't know. There's just a lot to that. I, I think that that's a very big problem and they need to really have a discussion about that. And he needs to understand that that can be a healing thing for her. Yeah. Back into the email. Yep. I've had conversations with him about it and he has only ever said that it's because he doesn't want to hurt me or that he wasn't in the mood for anything else. Okay. So that I wonder, I, I'm wondering if there's a, like a underlying depression there um, or if his, his mentality has changed. Cause like you said, like he sees that she's fragile now. I, I don't see that as the case. I said it could be. I know, but yeah. I know I'm saying like in my situation, I wouldn't look at you as fragile. If that was us, you having multiple miscarriages, I wouldn't see that as a fragile thing. Us having playtime in the bedroom is not going to contribute to your, right? Your, you know, your bot, your interior. Like, I mean, it will because I'm gonna wreck the inside of you, but it's that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not cutting that out either. Um, I it, need a minute. <laughs> I just don't see that as a fragile thing. I need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that my arm is broken. Yeah. Me too. Before that, it was the ankle. And playtime has hurt your ankle, so I, I, know, I know what it's going to do to your arm. <laughs> Miss the needles and the wax. That's too much information for people. Um, you destroying my insides is not, though? Yeah, it's not. Anyways, I wonder if he's feeling fragile or that or him saying that she's fragile has changed his ability to want to play that way. Because he's now had a traumatic experience happen to him twice. Right. Worldviews change when things like that happen. So mm -hmm. there's know. a feeling of helplessness in all of that, too, because it happened the first time and you guys weren't trying. So it kind of softened the blow, as you said, second time you guys were trying and he was really hoping for this. And then it happened again, and there's absolutely nothing he can do. And as a man, they want to fix shit. Right. He might need some therapy. Maybe. To, to work through that and follow the thread and really get to the root of where the mental block is. You want to get back into the email? Mm -hmm. I completely understand not being in the mood for more. And I would never force him. But this has just been happening for months now. I'm not sure what to do. I almost think... 
fuck just happened? I almost think that he thinks the miscarriage is somehow his fault in some way, even though it's nobody's fault and can just happen. Yeah, I can see that point of view if you guys were having very rough play in the early stages of a pregnancy. Because that's, isn't that when most miscarriages happen? In the first, uh, the first trimester. Right. Yeah, I would not recommend any hard play during the first trimester. I wouldn't recommend any hard play until the pregnancy is done. Yeah. Until the baby's been born. But that's also a me thing. So, like, I can understand that. If he's trying to get you pregnant again, you know what I mean? Like, that makes sense why he wouldn't want to do that. That's mm-hmm. a very real fear. But if you guys aren't trying to get pregnant again, yeah. I, don't, I don't see what the problem is. He's starting to emotionally shut down, and his ADHD has been getting much worse. He's not on medication for it because he was in a clinical child as a tri- as a child, around seven years old, for multiple medications, and it did way more harm than good. He's having difficulty opening up like he did before because I think he's at a point where he doesn't want to say that something is upsetting him and fear or get mad or upset or lose it completely because of all of the loss. Everything uh, in this email I've talked to him about. I have to pause. That that last part is not a fear because of what if. That's a fear because of what's happened. Because it has happened. Right. That's a learned behavioral response. Yeah. Um, also, the ADHD with no meds thing. I know that there are people out there who really need ADHD meds, but I also am not a fan of that. I agree. I know way too many people who have ADHD that are super fucking successful because it's a superpower when you realize what's going on with it. Mm-hmm. So... I think that ADHD is also a product of our environment. I have a whole lot of thoughts on ADHD. Yeah. Yep. I think that it, it's our fault. I think that we do that. It's, it is a an environmental thing because of the way that we live, live our lives now. I agree. You want to get back into the email? Yeah. We've actually been doing check-in since we started dating because I'm autistic. And sometimes it takes a while for me to notice when someone is hurt or something is wrong. I didn't want that in our relationship, so I made a schedule to check in with him and see how he was doing. He started doing the same for me, and it evolved as we've grown together. I'm not sure how to bring back the man I married. He snapped at our puppy a few times, nothing physical, just a slightly raised voice, but he's never been the person to do that to anyone, let alone a puppy. He's not sleeping well, he's working out almost excessively, and he's thrown himself deeper into work. I've tried to to suggest therapy or counseling for him because I think he isn't coping with the loss or he's scared about hurting me due to how hard I took the loss. How do I help him through this? I've bought him a journal and pencil so he can write down his thoughts and he said it's helped a bit with his anger, but I was wondering if there's anything anything else or if I should just wait and let him process things more and do what I think is him grieving. I'm going to do something that I absolutely hate that I'm about to do. Okay. So with me foreshadowing that statement or this statement, I I don't like sales pitches, right? And I know that a lot of the people that we've interviewed and a lot of people that we've worked with are very big on selling their product and what they do and their coaching and all of that shit. And selling themselves. And we've we've really strayed from that. We've talked about the men's Mm -hmm. group and the women's group and the Patreon and the Discord and our shirts and soaps, but we're not like... Buy our thing, right. right? We're just like, hey, we have this shit. If We're you doing want it, it, dope, right? And it's not been a sales pitch. This guy needs a community of men. He does, and I, I fucking hate that I'm about to do this, but I think that it would do him a lot of good to join the men's group on Patreon, even if it's just the public men's group. Why do you hate that you're about to do? Because this? I don't want to sell oh, our community. Got you. I want yeah. people that that like to find us because they're seeking it out, not because I'm fucking advertising. Well, it. this is her seeking. I know. If he's so far gone that he can't see the light anymore, she's trying to bring that to him. Yeah. He needs I he needs a community of men. Mm-hmm. And and my suggestion in this, and this is what I don't like, is that I'm pushing the men's group. We have a public one on Discord and we have a private one on Discord. The private one costs money. Um, and in the event that the private one goes well for him and he needs something further, we'll be doing coaching soon. Yes. But he needs something other than you right now, mm-hmm. as shitty as that sounds. He needs something that you can't provide to him. Right. He needs the wisdom of other men. And I don't know. There's something that women can only get from other women. And there's something that men can only get from other men. Right. And that's okay. It doesn't make you less valuable to him. It doesn't mean that what you're providing to him is inadequate. 
He just needs something different. Side note, I saw the driving Mrs. Peach's picture and would love to purchase the biggest size possible to hang in my living room in my house. What was the driving Miss Peaches? My steering wheel photo. Oh. Okay. My husband and I are car enthusiasts and everything in our house is black and white. So I'd love to have that piece that ties that all together. We can go as big as 40 by 60 on canvas. I think metal too. And then the way that you want it printed matters. Canvas mm -hmm. looks good. Metal looks incredible. It does look incredible on metal. So the one that, that photo behind me and that one over there behind Peaches that is both printed on metal. Um, but we can respond to her privately over that. Okay. But you can buy prints. I, I'm almost positive that prints on the website. It is on our website. To be better.co if you would like to buy some of our photography. See, and there's that's another thing. Like I've never once been like, hey guys, buy our pictures. I'm actually really stoked that somebody wants to buy one of my photos. We've had people buy some of your prints. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. The hand through the fence. Yep. I want to get back into photography. Me too. But we have to buy two more cameras in order for that to be a thing. We either buy two more photography cameras or we buy Sony FX3s to replace our photography cameras that it are would, it would currently make sense being to used do the to record. FX3s. I agree. I agree. The new studio will be the build out for all that. I'm so excited. Was that the end of that email? That was. I, I really, I, I hope that, I hope that he does join a group, finds a community, even if it's free on Facebook. Um, but more importantly, I hope that he's able to find a community that he meshes with and is willing to open up and talk to people. Mm -hmm. I get a lot from from our men's group personally. Like it, it's been a huge benefit to me. I've gotten in there it's when I've had really bad days and I've had fucking eight dudes sounding off. Like that sense of community is necessary. Yeah. But you can get it from church groups too. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be us. Fuck, find it somewhere. I don't give a shit Anywhere. if it's in my group or not. But even if he finds like gym bros, yeah, he needs a community. He he is throwing himself into distractions, the excessive working out and going deep into work. He does not want to be in his mind. Right. It's easier to to mask than it is to process. It's easier okay. to suppress than process. Yeah. So let's do a thank you and wrap this up because I, right. I it's it's six thirty at night already. So this one doesn't have a title, so I am just going to say the, the person's name. Her name is Summer. She says, hi, I just wanted to say thank you first and foremost. I started watching you guys while I was still with my ex-husband. I couldn't understand what you guys were talking about. Everything you said about traditional rules and everyone having roles, I couldn't connect with it because I couldn't feel what you were saying. I felt trapped in my marriage because there was no give and take. However... I have met my current fiance. Suddenly, when Peaches said, I'm proud to be your wife, not just to be proud, not just proud to be a wife, it hit me hard. Suddenly, everything you guys have been discussing clicked for me. Balancing the roles through communication and overcoming the demons we both mentally face has been hell, but I see the light at the end where I didn't before. It took me forever to realize that traditional is okay, acceptable, and so rewarding with the right person. To give in and get back the same energy, it is truly something amazing to feel. I want to say, please stay being amazing and sharing your story, because I believe you can help so many others. I appreciate you. I had to fill in peaches because she just said she said. No. So, I think this might be someone who has like a different language, maybe. Maybe. The um, the idea that it clicks for people when they get the right person just proves that people are wasting their time in relationships. Yes, it does. Right? Because when you know, you fucking know. And yeah. when you have somebody that you're willing to burn the fucking world down for, and they're willing to do the same for you, and that love is reciprocated, mm -hmm. it changes everything. All of that overly masculine female energy shit goes out the fucking window. Yeah. Like, Women, when they find their match and they got a good masculine man, it stops. It stopped with you. It stopped with Katie and Mike. Like mm -hmm. everyone we know that is in a dom sub. And I'm sorry. Everyone that we know that everyone that we know that is in a traditional relationship lean very hard into their masculine and feminine roles. Yeah. The gender roles are very much a thing for them. And it's because they have somebody that's capable of thriving in that role for each other. And when you're able to thrive in that role, you're powerful. Yep, there's a lot of strength there. Yeah. The dynamic duo. That's what they used to call Batman and Robin back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yep. And Batman. Christian Bale was my favorite Batman just because he whispered everything. Yeah. 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 I, uh, 
I liked Michael Keaton because that was my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Him, him being the aloof Bruce Banner. If you look, if you watch the Batman movies, every Batman is a different Batman. Yeah, they are. So like you had Christian Bale was the rich playboy. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Keaton was like the slightly older, still rich playboy. But then you you got into like um, the Robert Patterson guy. His his is the detective Batman. Yeah, like the yeah. Yeah, Batman. The sleuth. The sleuth, yeah. It changes throughout all the movies. Every Batman has a different character. Um, ben Affleck was the old Batman. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty crazy to see that because there's the evolution of DC as much as everybody hates the DC movies and mm-hmm. they're not loyal to them the way that they were to Marvel. There is a lot of depth there. There is. In terms of characters. Yeah. Anyways. Heath Ledger was my favorite Joker. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I don't know, man. I like Jared Leto as the Joker. Yeah. The gangster? I don't, I don't think I've seen Jared Leto. He was in um, the Suicide Squad. I haven't seen Suicide Squad. He was very brief. He was supposed to get an entire movie based off of his his role in that, and they, they ended up canceling it. Oh, wow. Um, Jack Nicholson did a really good job as the Joker because he was the prankster. Like, yeah. you, you again, it's character development. You it look is. at every Joker, every single one of them had a different personality. It was all told from a different a different viewpoint of the comics. Mm-hmm. They did a really good job with those movies. I really liked um, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker too. I hated that movie. Really? I, I left the theater before uh, the end. Why? Well, their life should happen, but everybody's like the best part of the movie happened after you left. I'm like, yeah. And I wasted two hours of my fucking life to see a 15 minute cool segment. Like, no, I think the whole buildup is the best part of the much. movie. It shows the mental decline of somebody who is very seriously mentally ill too much. I could have gotten that in 45 minutes. I didn't need two and a half hours of it. Yeah. I think I think it is very tasteful, and I think it was art. Yeah. I very much enjoyed that movie. And I did not. That makes all. me sad because it was such a good experience for me. I hope there's other movies out there like that for you, though, that you get, like, you just think that it was so beautifully done that it was it's art. Yeah. There are movies that I enjoy like that. I don't do well with um, filler Oh, yeah, like they're trying to just prolong a moment. Right, and they do that a lot in movies now because the scripts are bullshit. Like movie storytelling is not what it was, mm-hmm. right? Like things are just being recycled now. They just fucking remade Roadhouse. Like They really remade a, Wow. Yeah, and it's got Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor in it. And mm-hmm. and Post Malone, I think, is in it as well. Um, I like Post Malone. I, I, I don't like know who about he's him become. as an actor, but... Um, but they're, they're redoing everything. It's just recycled movies. Yeah. Cause there's no originality anymore. Right. So I, but I, I do agree that there are movies that, that do that for me, mm-hmm. but even in watching television shows, if I watch an episode and it feels like nothing was done and it was just a waste of an hour, like it's, a massive ad, it is literally a filler episode to, to reach the 10 episode requirement for a season. I don't like that shit. Yeah. So if I'm watching a movie that can be told in an hour and 20 minutes, I'd rather watch an hour and 20 minutes of a really good movie than two and a half hours. With an hour and ten minutes of bullshit in it. Yeah. So, but that's a me thing. Do you have anything else you'd like to, to talk about? No, I'm good. I want to go play some COD with you. Okay. With that being said, guys, uh, we have a Twitch account. <laughs> we do. I was about to wrap that up, but that was a great opportunity to plug Twitch. We are To Be Better Podcast on Twitch. Peaches over here broke her elbow on Saturday. And since she broke her elbow, we started playing video games at nighttime when everyone else is asleep. Uh, in our home so that we can actually just decompress instead of playing on the couch or watching TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started streaming video games. Yep. Pretty soon we're going to have a whole new studio set up and we will be on screen as we are gaming. Yep. You'll be able to see both of our beautiful faces and his very structured gameplay and my very aloof. Oh, look at the clouds. I love this architecture. (laughs) Oh my gosh. They really nailed things in that game. Like that bridge is so beautifully done. Everybody right now that has watched me bash video games is going, this motherfucker's playing video games now. Right, but we're playing video games eight or nine o'clock at night for an hour or two. Right. The the real the real thing there is that we're not using video games as escapism. Right. This is decompression time as a couple. As a couple. Right. This is a, a another thing within our life that we can experience together that's not going to drive a divide between the two of us. Right. And we understand that it is a structured thing. I have played maybe two days this week all day because I'm You're broken. I'm on pain meds and I'm broken and I don't want to sit there and I don't want to scroll TikTok and I can't focus on a book. Why not play a video game? And work is still getting done because I'm still doing shit. And when I'm yeah. done for the day, I'm like, let's, you want to play? And you're like, yeah. Or you're like, no, and we don't play. Yeah. And then we watch a movie or something mm-hmm. and where I just sleep. Yep. So 
I've never had an issue with video games. I have an issue with escapism. Anything can be unhealthy. Cycling can be unhealthy. Right. The reason that I have the issue with escapism, obviously, is that people are forfeiting their actual life for a mask. For digital. Right. And I always use video games because that's the most common in terms of emails that we get. It's alcoholism and video game addiction yeah, and, and corn addiction. Which are all things being pushed by society. Right. Drinking it's, is normal. Right. People are promoting their OF and childhood pickup lines. And then the video games, there are people who have their like a whole room in their house dedicated to that moving floor so they can be lost in AR AI. or VR. VR, yeah. Virtual reality. Yeah, or AR, augmented reality. Yeah. Anything I love, else? I just, I love our relationship. Our life is very complex because of the work that we do. And it is about to become more complex because we are about to branch off and actually interacting with people in their personal lives and like mentoring. We have a very simple life though. Yeah. We stay home. We, I cook, I clean, you work, we have a family. We don't argue about stupid shit. There's no drama. I don't have to worry about you cheating on me. I don't have to worry about you one day going, I'm tired of your borderline. I'm leaving. And it's because of the work that we put into ourselves and into each other. And I just appreciate that you do all of it. Well, we're still putting that work in. That's not changed. I know. So I'm glad that you're happy. That's my goal. You nail it. Pretty good at nailing things, too. <laughs> he meant he's really good at nailing me. <laughs> he's really good at nailing me. <laughs> Just can't accept my dad joke. Come on, that was good. <laughs> no. All right. The possessiveness in me shall not allow that. That's fine. That shall not pass. <laughs> pa! With that being said, guys, remember you're the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Goodbye, bumblebees. <laughs>